In the previous video we did sort A. Now we didn't finish it, we need to do the two string method for it, but we're also going to do sort D in here and attempt to run it. We're going to come down here and down here we'll make our two string. So we are going to do a private again because this is a private method. We're going to have it be static because while well, we're just accessing it, we're not making an instance of it. So private static it's going to be a void because it's just printing. Then we're just going to call it two string. We want to pass in just our array and that's all we need. So we're gonna have this and then this is going to be our method. If we hover over this, um, well, first I need to finish writing out the array. Then there's no more errors. So we fixed it, it was just missing the array. Inside of here, we are going to do a for loop that will run the entire length of our array. So we will do for We'll do int a is equal to zero. This is arbitrary. We'll do a is less than arr dot length. And then we're gonna do a plus plus. And then we're going to be inside of this for loop and then we're just going to do a sys out. And then we are going to realize that I am new to this MacBook Pro and cannot figure out the keys. And then I figured it out. So we have system.out.println and then what we want to do is print out the specific index. So we have ARR, A, and then we want to fix this up a little bit, but we'll, we'll get to that in a second. We're gonna add some commas and braces to make it look nice. If we just look at this, um, if we get rid of this print line and then do a um, sysout print line for the outside of this loop, because we want to print a line down here, but we don't wanna necessarily print a line in front of every single thing. So we'll have this, and we have our radix sort in here. All we need to do is have a two string call in here where we pass in the array, and then we can try to run it. So if we run this, we get radix sort, and we have a bunch of numbers. Okay, so to see this, we are definitely going to need to add at least a space for now. We can run it again. And we get 5, 6, 9, 88, 96, 234, all of the rest. And that looks like it's in order. So that looks good. Let's come down here and fix her up a little bit. So what we want to do is we're going to do this out. And we're going to always print out braces no matter what. So we'll just have a brace in here. We'll have a space. That'll print out the first one. Now, we can run this for our array.length minus 1. That way um, we can add a comma in here and then at the end it won't just print out a random comma because after our for loop we are going to come down here and we are going to print out the last one with our last bracket. However, we only want to print out whatever is last if there's something there. So we're going to have an if statement. We're going to do if our array or ar dot length does not equal zero we will be inside of here. And then we can say, well, we want to um, print. We'll do a sysout. And then we are just going to have our ARR. And we want the element at this index. So we'll do ARR.length minus one because we want the index, not the full length, because the length is one more than the number of indexes. And so we have this in here. And then well, we can just, since we have a print line in here, we are going to append to this our closing brace. Otherwise, we're just going to come down here and print out a closing brace. And just to make sure we don't print out two uh, braces, we're going to surround this with an else. And so now we can run it and see if it looks good. Running it, it almost looks good. Just got to take out this print line right here and make it a print. And we ran it and it looks nice. So now we can move on to sort D, which is sort descending. Very similar to sort ascending, we're going to have a sysout and we're going to write out radix sort in descending order. And then we're going to come down below it. We're going to do the same thing where we create a queue for 10 buckets. So we're going to do queue, the brackets that indicate that we are having a specific number. Then we're going to do queue 
radix, or I'm sorry, not q radix, we'll do q array, and this is equal to a new q, and then we are making it as 10. So inside of here, we're going to add the buckets 0 through 9 to the q. We're going to use our for loop again. It's going to be int a is equal to 0. I'm running this as long as a is less than 10, and we're going to have a plus plus. And then inside of here, we're going to have q array. We're going to have a, and these, this is equal to a new q. And so, well, we've made our new q's. All we got to do now is, as we've done previously, fill buckets going through the powers of 10. So we have a for loop in here. We have int power of 10. Remember, this is very similar. This is starting at 1. And then we're running this as long as power of 10 is less than or equal to our max base because we want to examine everything until we hit the max base. Once we hit the max base, the way that radix sort works, everything will be sorted. And for more information about how radix sort works, it'll be in the playlist link below the like button. You can just do a control F and find it in there. And lastly, we are going to want to increment our power of 10. We're going to do power of 10 times equals 10. And then we're going to come out here, and now we can start writing our for loop. So we're going to examine the values in the array. We're going to have a for loop. We're going to do int a is equal to 0, and then we're going to do a is less than our arr, which is the array, dot length, because remember, we are examining all the values that are currently in the array we're passing in. We want to increment this. So we're just going to do a plus plus, and then we can come outside here, and then, or we're actually going to be inside of here, and then we're going to be queuing into the array whatever digit we have. So this is like what we did last time. We're going to find this digit, and we're going to set it equal to digit. So we're going to do int digit, and this is equal to the get digit. We're going to be revisiting our private function down here again. And then we're going to pass in our array at the specific index, so array A. And then we're going to pass in our current power of 10. And so from here, we're going to write a Q array. And then we have our digit has the index. And then we're going to do dot in Q. So we're adding this to the Q. And then we're going to have our AR at the index A. Now we're going to come down below this and we're going to do a int item is equal to zero. This is where we change a little bit. Instead of writing um, what we wrote up here, where we were ascending, we want to be descending. So we are going to be decrementing. And that kind of wordplay, ascending, is with we're incrementing. Kind of sounds familiar, but you can really get it when you say you're descending, it's decrementing. So we have nine is the max Q size. It's important to keep in mind when we write this for loop, we're gonna have four. We're going to do int Q num. Instead of being equal to zero, it's equal to nine. And then we're going to run this as long as Q num is greater than or equal to zero. And then we're just going to do Q num minus minus. And then we'll be inside of our for loop. And then I guess I just did plus equals. I meant to do uh, less than equals or greater than equals. So running as long as Q is greater than or equal to zero, or you could say as long as zero is less than or equal to our Q num. So inside of here, we're going to have another for loop. We're going to do the for, and then we're going to run it. So we've already declared the item. We got to have this in here. We're going to run it as long as Q is not empty. So Q array have the exclamation mark out front. Q num, so we're getting the specific index that we are looking at for this array. Then we're going to hop out of here and we're going to do dot is empty. So as long as it's not empty, and then we're just going to do item plus plus. And then outside of here, we're going to do array, and we're going to get the specific item index, so we're going to do item, or I'm sorry, we're using item as our index. And then we're going to set this equal to the Q array. And then inside of here, we are going to have the index, which is Q num, and then we're going to do dot dq. And so we are dequeuing. This should be arr also. 
and then this can be over here. And so this should be our DQ. All we got to do is print it. So we're going to call the two string again, and then we're going to pass in our ARR, and then we're going to close that off. Now we can run it. It looks like this. We can check to make sure it's all good. It looks like it worked. So that is the radix sort using small main method, which is nice. We have our node class, which is really a helper for this queue. And in our queue, we have the private node head tail. We have is empty method. We have an in queue function. We also have a DQ function, which I will write some comments for real quick. And lastly, we have the radix sort class, which is really the heart of this. So first we have these kind of copy and get max base, which really introduce us here. And then we have sort A, which really throws us into radix sort. And then we have sort D, which is another thrust into radix sort. And then lastly, we have these two private fields that will, or private methods, sorry, not fields, methods or functions. And this will help us write the um, actual sorting. And that's the entire code and output for this Radix sort lab. Important to mention that I realize I just have a bad habit of, but classes should not start with an uppercase. So that should be lowercase. This should also be a lowercase. And so we are going to have to change all of these, or at least I'm going to. So these should be node, this should be node with a lowercase, again, because that class name should be a lowercase. So that should be a lowercase as well, meaning that this should be a lowercase, this should be a lowercase, this and this should all be lowercase. And then we're gonna have to come down here to the queue and we're gonna change all of these to lowercase. And then we're gonna come down here and we have to lastly change in our sort D to lowercase. And after we do that, then all of our errors should be done. We'll run it again just to make sure all is well. All is well, all is good, and now it works, but it works even better because it is correct.